Enoch Stephen. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, uh, Hilary, and, and many thanks to our witnesses for some really interesting and informative uh, evidence today. I wanted to focus on the issue of the Kent access permit. Um, and just to get a sense of a, a few um, aspects of this really, A, how it would work in practice and also around enforcement. Um, so this uh, smart freight system has been described, I think, as, a, as an honesty box uh, whereby uh, the, the hauliers essentially just tick a box saying, do you have all the correct paperwork? without actually having to prove they have all the correct paperwork, but just in order to get the Kent access permit, they just tick that box. Um, maybe just Elizabeth uh, first, but certainly would be very good to hear from Steve and Kevin on this as well. How high would you assess the risk that hauliers will just simply take the path of least resistance and tick the box saying they have the correct paperwork uh, in order to get the access permit, in order to just kind of chance their arm or say, oh, we'll get it, we'll sort it out when we're en route or whatever it might be, uh, would, would you assess that as a high, uh, medium or low risk that they will do that? Uh, perhaps Elizabeth first. We are a very regulated industry. Uh, we're very high on compliance, so we need to keep our uh, HGVs, for example, at a particular standard of maintenance, of checks, uh, of so on. Um, we are a very regulated uh, industry. I would suggest that filling in it incorrectly will not be the path of least resistance. Uh, there are, are cameras, uh, there's enforcement by DVSA or Kent Police. Um, vehicle, if you are found to not have the right paperwork, uh, you can get, you will be taken um, away to either complete your uh, compliance or you may be turned away completely. You may get a 300 fine, um, pounds fine as well. Um, and that is just on your journey. So there's a chance of that. Uh, and then when you arrive at the port without the correct paperwork, you will not be allowed to progress on your way. And that has a, a big impact on yourself as a driver uh, and how you spend your time, but also a very big impact on uh, how your company perceives you and how uh, their, their traders and their customers perceive you. It will lead to delay. So I don't believe it's a rational decision to to not fill it in correctly. Um, in any industry there will always be a proportion of people that have been uh, through the midst of times who do take their chances uh, otherwise we wouldn't need a uh, police full stop or enforcement full stop um, but I imagine it will be a smaller percentage. Um, I'm sure Kevin will have thought about this quite a lot in putting together the in enforcement plans. We've not seen the details of the enforcement plans but we know some of the plans. Well, if I may on that, on the specific Kent question, of course, uh, you would need a, a Kent politician or city officer to discuss it. With you. And the reason I say that is a lot of work has been going on between government and Kent County Council on this, and they would be able to provide the information. What I would just say, if I briefly broaden it out, of course, that other ports have been making a lot of headline preparing for this. And of course, I don't know whether you have spent any time as a, a committee looking at the issue of secondary ports, which are also very important as well. So, for instance, Harwich in Essex is the secondary port to Dover. Harwich has been doing a lot of prepared work. Other ports will have done that as well. And the thing we have to bear in mind, it isn't ships moving around to different ports. It's uh, cargo on the other side in the EU moving to a different port in Harwich, it would be the hook, um, to get there. So a lot of that preparedness work has been going on. And I think if you haven't done it yet, uh, it's something worth looking at about that. So uh, while the Cali Dover is an extremely important connection, some of these other issues are important. And the second reports are something that really does need to be looked at. Uh, thanks very much. Just, just going back to this issue of enforcement, how are the authorities responsible for enforcing going to be able to distinguish between lorries that are only making domestic deliveries and lorries that are heading for the EU. How is that distinction going to be made? 
question to me. It's a question around, obviously, the paperwork that, that uh, is being prepared. Yeah, the paperwork, but also the actual enforcement of that. So how, how will you, you know, the, so you say that there'll be the, 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 the cameras on the roads that will pick up a license plate of a lorry that's coming in to Kent that is supposed to have the correct paperwork, but how will that actually be enforced? Are those lorries going to be stopped by the police or whoever it is and checked? And then the police, the local police, are going to have to know what they're looking for and why they're looking for it. So again, one of the questions that we've been asking is precisely this, and I would imagine that would go through the local resilience forums where the police sit. They don't sit on all political forces, just local government, but we sit on their committees uh, of the local resilience forum. And that's something we do absolutely have to bottom line. Uh, and I know the government has been talking to the LRFs across the country about this, about enforcement. How, what the exact detail of how that's going to be done, I can't tell you sitting here. That's not to say it hasn't been done either. What we do know is, of course, it must be ready and be prepared to make sure that is enforced and enforced correctly, and the resourcing to make sure that happens as well. Uh, I mean, I find it quite extraordinary that we're just a few weeks away from January the 1st, and we still don't know how this is going to be enforced. But um, the, the other point was just on 85% uh, of what is coming into the UK is on European vehicles who then fill up in the UK and, and go back. So we would have um, British authorities stopping and fining uh, European nationals, uh, EU nationals for these transgressions. Do we see any issues with that in terms of, uh, you know, it, it's not exactly going to endear us to the French or the Germans or the Dutch or whoever it might be if potentially hundreds of their nationals are being stopped and forced to spend two to three days on the hard shoulder in a, on a motorway in Britain somewhere waiting for their paperwork to be processed. Do you see any potential sort of political fallout from that? Maybe Elizabeth or, yeah, or, or Kevin and, well, well, and then Elizabeth. So, so if I may, uh, see, I think one of the reasons we're struggling is you've probably got not the right witnesses to answer that particular question, I would say. I think you need to have members of Local Resilience Forum and Kent here to ask that question. Um, all on a political note, I would say, is I do know a lot of work has been taking place in this area, and that's why you need to have those particular witnesses to talk to you about that. And the one thing we do want out of all of this is very good relationships with the rest of the EU following uh, the 31st of December. Absolutely. A uh, Elizabeth? A couple of points I can add to that. Um, they, uh, the word forced to be pulled up and, and wait for the paperwork, they do have a choice of... Uh, getting the, the right paperwork together that, that's what we're hoping for um, we and there will be a, a period where, where that's difficult for people but eventually um, there'll be fewer and fewer people who don't have the right paperwork because they know it's important and also understand more about the processes but it also uh, makes the information provision to foreign operators very very important indeed mm. uh, your handbook that i mentioned earlier uh, will be translated into different languages. Um, however, it is quite late in the day. We've had a number of issues, a number of iterations of it. It was planned to be launched on the 2nd of November, um, but we need to conclude it wasn't fit for purpose um, for that date because it couldn't answer that fundamental question in sufficient clarity. What documentation and checks do I need for my journey? So uh, version one, will be released on the 18th of November with translations to follow. Uh, version two, which will have pictures of documents, maps and checklists uh, from the 7th of December and then with translations to follow. Um, HMRC will and um, Border Protocol Delivery Group will be able to tell you more. Um, it's one of our metrics in the, the metrics which are not yet published about um, their engagement with other countries. We've held a number of sessions with trade associations for other countries. But uh, if we were, the questions you are asking to me illustrate the importance of spending the next few weeks, the next 50 days, um, also focusing very much on uh, other countries, the information they need to know 
about our systems. Thank you, uh, Hilary. I think I'm out of time. I did have just one more question on just when we might expect the uh, decisions and information about the enforcement mechanisms for the Kent access permit uh, and, the, and, and violations in Kent, if you like, uh, when we might expect that to be published by the government, uh, that I think would be useful for us to know. I, I don't know whether the committee have, have got a brief answer because I'm out of time uh, on when will we know how all of this is going to be enforced. Um, I know there's a consultation period up to the 16th of November, uh, and that might be uh, helpful in working out the date when the enforcement process is going to be published. Thank you very much. Thank you.